all the kids in West Africa that had baseball equipment and learned how to play it all um, called balls and strikes with a Japanese accent. So all these, wow. all these Ghanaian kids were like, Steve Reiko. And it was, it was, the, it was, the, it was the funniest thing. It was the funniest so funny. thing ever. Welcome to Yoel's Hangouts podcast. I'm your host, Yoel. I got a very special guest in the virtual studio today. Uh, Dave Carroll from the Two Wise Schools podcast, your co-host. Uh, Aaron White is missing. We, we miss him. We wish he was here. Um, yes. wh- why, why couldn't he come? Uh, I, he, uh, he's, he has, he has more real work during the day than I do. I feel like you know, yeah. people that work, fucking, yeah. you know, losers, <laughs> right. Um, but, uh, yeah. So thank you for, thank you for coming on first and foremost. Um, you, you are a pastor, you host a podcast. Um, is cursing. Okay. If, it, if you want me to shut it off, I can shut off the cursing. It's okay. You're, you're it's your podcast. You light it up, buddy. Hey, no, listen, if, if you know, I, I want to make you feel comfortable. For, for me, I, I could actually could shut it off whenever I want. So it, it doesn't matter to me, but oh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be, a, my parents watch this too. So maybe this is a good, this is a good one to send to my parents. All right. All right. I'll, 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 I'll not cuss in this one. All right. Um, but, uh, you know, again, I, I, we, we had a little bit of a chat before the show. Um, I'm someone that identifies as Christian. I cuss, you know, I, I make mistakes. I sin. No one's perfect. You sin too. I think this is a very common thing amongst amongst humans and amongst Christians that yes, I think sin that, is sin is quite common amongst us yeah. us humans. Yeah, and I think uh, you know, obviously, it, it, it's a balance, right? Like we, you know, being like, oh, you know, Christians, you know, we all sin. You know, it's okay, but. In reality, you know, we have we have a target that we aspire to reach. We have a you know a, a goal that that we want to to reach as far as our who we are, what we want to be known for, what you know who we are in front of God, and you know he, He's around us and He watches what we do. Um, but again, it, we're not perfect either, right? I think a lot of people pretend like a lot, pretend like they're perfect, pretend like they don't mis- make mistakes, and I think uh, that's very you know that's very bad and a very uh, you know it's not going to make a very healthy life because you just ignore the bad things you do. Oh, I'm perfect. You know, yada, yada. Do, 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 do you, do you struggle with the whole, like, you know, I, I, I want to be a good person. I know my sins are forgiven, but also, you know, am I just making an excuse for, you know, my bad behavior? You know, you know, you know, that, that, yeah. uh, that yeah, tough of little course. Uh, problem. I guess, you know, the, there's a scripture that says uh, we've, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And, and all, I know I have, I have not been a perfect human being by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you know, I, we can get into chatting about this as, as we go, but, um, for a good chunk of my adult life in Brantford, Ontario, which is just outside of Toronto, um, uh, I've been known as captain kindness inside our city. This, the superhero that we created uh, years ago. And somehow this thing, this thing hit like it, it all of a sudden I, you know, I did this once for a Santa Claus parade. And next thing I know, people are asking captain kindness to come to their school and to cut the ribbon on their fish and chip stand and all these different things. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, do I actually really have to play a superhero and put on this leotard again? And, and it's been like 10, 12 years that I've, that I've been doing this. Well, in the in the how do you deal with being an imperfect person? Try being known as Captain Kindness <laughs> around town, and people looking at you going and judging you by you're a freaking superhero, and you know when, when you pressure. when you don't act, yeah. And and I guess for me, the way I deal with it is that I don't pretend like I'm anything but human, and 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 as a pastor and as just a person, yeah, I do want to reflect god and his attributes and all this stuff but i've also i've also found that just being real with being who we are as people the flawed imperfect people i think it actually it it really breaks down it breaks down sort of that tension you know people people might you know know me as a 
superhero or pastor or whatever the heck they think of me but really they get to know me and they know that i'm just dave and and i'm uh i'm just a normal guy and so i actually i actually find a great degree of uh, f- uh freedom in acknowledging that uh, we're not perfect and i'm uh, i'm far from perfect right like i was a I was a bully when I was a kid, like, and when I was in high school, I was a terrible bully. And really there's, Oh yeah. And there there's, I was, I was kind of a bad guy and uh, some people didn't see me as that. Uh, but because I, I, you know, I was, they weren't the ones that I was targeting. Like I would target people and, 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 and bully them. And there are so many adults that, you know, when I got my life straight in my, in my late teens, early twenties that I had to go back to and apologize to and all these things. And, and so there are still people that every now and again, will go, you're captain kindness. You know what you did to me? And I go, Oh my goodness. I, I, I don't even remember all of it. And then I've had to be able to go and apologize for it. And uh, thankfully many of these people have forgiven me and are, we're now friends. Right. But uh, I, so I think that's, that's just human. That's, that's the life we live, man. Isn't that interesting? I, I think I've heard a lot of these stories of uh, people. I mean, I, I think I'm one of those people as well in the sense of um, I, I think I was a bully to like, to teachers. I think I, you know, being class clown, um, you know, they're the adults in the room. I had a little bit of, you know, resentment towards, you know, being told what to do and, you know, being controlled in a, in a classroom setting, you know, I think subconsciously it man- manifested itself and mm. just being disruptive, disrespectful, um, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, even thinking back at like, especially middle school, just like not, you know, having the being smart enough to have the disrespect and wittiness to like get away with it and like you know still be hurtful but not the maturity of really understanding you know these are people they're not just like these robots that don't have feelings you know as a lot a lot of the times we kind of see teachers as like not human growing up so I think like but then like as you get older right you gain perspective you start to be like whoa like I was not really like a good dude I was not a good (laughs) I was not being a good person and I think like and I think you know that's really important and I think like second that's why I think second chances are super important if people have genuinely you know made that effort done that work then you know we, we have to be we have to realize like people grow people change people start to learn new data and apply it to their lives. Like it happens all the yeah. time. I, I have friends that, you know, they were this way when we were in high school and middle school. And then you see them now they're married, you know, they're super nice dudes, like just like, you know, really got their, you know, ish together. Right. <laughs> so, so, you know, it, it's uh, well done. That was, that was smooth. Well that was done. Good. Good. I, yeah. I almost yeah. slipped and I was like, Okay, oh. yeah, I guess like no, I, I, I literally I, li- I this is like it's gonna be a challenge for me, for me uh, <laughs> this hour. Uh but yeah, so I think that's uh that's super important and I think that that's something that you know is just real life. Like no one wants to live up to this impossible figure of perfection, you know. But yeah. should should you should you try to be the best person you can and be critical on yourself? And the, there is that element of leadership, right? You know. If you're in a leadership position, you should be held to a higher standard, of course, because, you know, people are looking to you. You can't be like, oh, well, I'm going to be a pastor, but I'm going to be the, you know, the, but I'm going to also like sell drugs, you know, yeah. during the week. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, <laughs> like, it's, it's not good for your, not good for your career. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to no. be very, you're, you're going to lose a lot of credibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say so, yeah. Yeah. You know, well, you would make a great Gen Xer. It sounds like you would have made a great Gen Xer. What is that? Oh, that, those are my people, the Gen X, the Gen X generation. There is nothing that generation X hated more than everything. Uh, so there, uh, you would have made a good, you would have made, you I hate everything. Good. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. Oh, we were, so we were my, my generation, the generation X group. So I'm like, I was born in 76 and I'm sort of on the tail end of it. We sort of had a, a, uh, a reputation of being people that didn't really care that much about stuff. And so that was wow. really kind of led to some of my, I had similar, similar things to what you're talking about with your, with your teachers and classmates and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I feel like 70, 70s is, I feel like what it's known for is like, you know, 
free, you know, it doesn't matter. Like nothing matters. You know, we're all just like, we're all oppressed. We have these rules. Like, why are we following them? They're just meant to control us. Like, I don't want to do this. That's what I see is like the 70s. But, Am I wrong? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But the truth is, is that we were, we were more like the Bugs Bunny generation. You see, Bugs Bunny, Bugs, Bugs was smart. Bugs, Bugs knew Bugs could do whatever he wanted as this, the smartest rabbit in the history of rabbits. But he was just happy being who he was, playing his little banjo, eating his carrots, that sort of thing. So Bugs, Bugs just didn't like other people telling him what to do. And when other people told him what to do, he started poking at him and poking ah, at him. Yeah. yeah so that's, 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 that's that all that people. Place. Yeah. They missed the generation, the beautiful nuance of the generation Xers. Yeah, we just didn't like that's them telling us what to do. Yeah, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that is me. Dang, you really uh, broke me down right there, really quickly. We're like ten you minutes. Could, yeah, you could pay for the session later. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I owe you. I owe you something. Well, I mean, I think I knew. I think I knew that about myself, but I think like juxtaposing and comparing it to the '70s, I didn't really think about because there is a difference. Because yes, you see sure. the seventies is like, oh, you know, they didn't care. They were, you know, felt oppressed. It's like, no, they just like they knew they 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 wanted to do what they wanted to do, you know. But when but ultimately, you know, as I get older, I realize like you don't know as much as you think you know. Yeah. You just know what you know. So you think you know everything, but you don't know what you don't know, right? So for me, I I, I knew I knew some things. I knew I knew where, where I felt like the world was going. And I felt like I knew where, like what my piece was in it mm-hmm. as far as like the wisdom of being like, Hey, like there's certain aspects of life where you just got to be like, Hey, like, you know, swallow your pride and do this until you figure out like what else you're going to do an exit strategy or, you know, do well in school, you know, be behave well, you know, that's what I should have done. But for me, I was just like, man, I don't want to do this because I see this, the internet, blah, 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 calculators. Why am I learning math when I can just plug it into the <laughs> machine? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was just so yeah. in my head about yeah. it that I literally like, just, it, it was tough. It was tough. I think uh, every decade of my life where I've gone on to, you know, my, when I hit my thirties, I went, oh my goodness, I'm so thankful for the people that were patient with me in my twenties when I thought that I knew everything. And then I hit forties and went, oh my goodness, I'm so thankful for the people who were patient with me when I was in my thirties, because I thought I knew everything there. And, you know, I think that's the, the lesson to me is a, be patient with people who are younger than you because they're still learning it. And be thankful for the people who are patient with you now, because, you know, I think especially people that are, you know, creative or have something to say and, you know, that sort of thing, you kind of work your stuff out verbally sometimes. Right. And so sometimes you say stupid things and then years down, like I remember when, um, when I was, uh, when, when blogging first became a thing and MySpace and blogging were, you know, the, the, the great innovations of social media, I was working, I was a young married guy and I was working, um, about half an hour out of town. I had a young, one young son and, and I uh, was working at starting this church in my city, but I was working in radio doing copywriting and writing ads and voicing ads and that sort of thing. And it wasn't what I really wanted to be doing with, with, with my life. I wanted to be, you know, getting involved in community and community transformation and that sort of thing in my city. But I was paying the bills working in radio um, uh, outside of town. And so I, I, not knowing what I was doing, I started using like MySpace and blogging in the early days of Facebook and Twitter and that sort of thing. And now I'll look back at the things that I wrote, you know, all those years ago. And I think, oh my goodness. I, I mean, I'm ge- I guess I'm glad that it's there that I can look back, but I certainly am not, you know, copying and pasting and going, here's something really insightful that I said 20 years ago that uh, I'm super proud of. Some, there was the odd jewel, but that's life, yeah. right? Like I thought I was that's brilliant true. at the time. I thought I was brilliant. Funniest dude ever, you know, but well, also it's life. I mean, in, in fairness to you, like, you know, I'm realizing sometimes the context changes of what is normal to say on these mediums. Like back in the day, I would, I would use Facebook as like Twitter, like things that I think might be normal to say on Twitter. Yeah, would be so strange to put on Facebook 
but there really isn't a plot like for example like i'll see i'll see the you know callbacks like they'll do like on this day seven years ago blah blah, blah on facebook like like it'll be it'll be like doing doing uh playing basketball with my friends <laughs> yes <laughs> this is not what you would say today no no like there's no. no medium where like that's even remotely like normal or okay but back then it's like oh you know he's playing cool you was playing basketball it's cool to see like what he's up to because social media was new you know you you're kind of like the the threshold and the barrier for like quality content was so low because like you know there isn't just sheer just flooding of, of, uh, of posts right but so I, I think in fairness to you but there are those posts that I look back and I'm like yo well you missed the mark on this one buddy <laughs> yes. not you, you you did not you did not make the point but also but also there are some of those gems that you see and you're like oh you know dang I, that's cool that I was even thinking about that yeah. you know 10 years ago and I still feel that same way today so it's no, not I, I something that do. it's not something the past generations have in that same in that same form. I guess those who mm-hmm. maybe were using diaries or journals, journal, um, yeah. but but you know the the fact that I can daily look back and go, here's what I was thinking as a young father, you know, 13, 14 years ago when Facebook started. It's neat. It's a it's a it's a treasure thing a, a little bit for me to be able to go like because they'll there'll be Thanks, even little Luke. things like. Yeah, like like little tiny things that I go, oh, I was thinking that when I had to get up early when my daughter was super young and now I've got three teenagers in my house and life is so totally different, but it's this daily snippet and reminder of how I felt at the time. And that's, that's not Beautiful. nothing. That's, yeah, I love, is, the, I love the journey. Of, I love the journey of life. I, I genuinely yeah. do like the ups, the downs, you know, not knowing something, re-knowing something. I love reposting old stuff where I was just being stupid. Yeah. Just like, making fun of myself being like, wow, good job. You well, you really are a genius, like, or like something like that, you know, <laughs> because, and, and, and when kids, you know, even, even, I mean, look, I'm 26, right. I'm still pretty young. And, and the thing is my, you know, I have friends that, you know, maybe are like 19, 20, 21. Right. But he, I've even grown so much since I was like 21. So in certain things that I see in other people, I, I, I'm not hard on them where I'm like, man, like, what are you doing, bro? Like, you need to be careful because I know how things play out. I know mm-hmm. you're going to change your mind about this like later. I try to help out, but I know like I was there too. And I, I, if I had, if I, if my, if their brain was in my brain where I was at at that age, right? Like, I don't know if I would have made a better decision, right? So there is a sense of like mercy and forgiveness that you got to show other people. And it helps to like read that stuff and know, remember the mistakes that you've done and, you know, not to excuse it, not to validate it, but also like just have that perspective of, Hey, like I was there too. I was, you know, a dummy back then too. Yeah. Grace. Grace is unmerited favor. That's the, that's sort of the, the short definition of it. And uh, I think that is in short supply today. Unmerited yes. favor. Man, the internet, especially the internet, man. Like, it's a zoo. I'm not sure whether you've uh, looked at it lately, but it's a, uh, it's a zoo. It's, it's a sad. zoo. It's yeah. sad. And I think uh, I'm just re- like, we're, we're, we're ruining people's lives for like maybe one mistake or, you know, things that they, that were uncovered that people themselves do, you know, all the time, but they're not public figures. And I think like, yeah, we should be, you know, these like, for example, for, you know, celebrities. Yeah. You should hold, maybe they should be held to a higher standard. They have a lot of influence. There's that argument. I completely understand, but I think like there isn't really a fil- like if we operated the justice system, how the internet operates, like the punishment system, like it'd be like, yeah. hey, <laughs> you you stole, guess what? We're gonna kill you. <laughs> yes, like, that, there that, is no no cause and effect no, correlation. Like, no, there's no systematic like level of escalation of like you know this is the level of seriousness of the issue. Here's the corresponding punishment. This yeah. it's like pure anarchy. It's like the stuff you. It's like the stuff you read in like the Old Testament where it's like <laughs> you wear the wrong cl- uh, cloth of clothing and, and you're done. put to death. You're <laughs> like, done. <laughs> it's yeah. like, wow, this really like, cooked. escalated quickly. You um, know, I, I partway through the, the last year of 
you know, lockdown stuff. I, there was, there was one morning where I, I woke up and I picked up my phone and I watched, you know, dumb opinion here, somebody judging somebody here, all the different things that we all, you know, are very sick of, you know, you see it happen and you're like, Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. And I started to get my, you know, you know, big toe thumbs going and trying to, um, I'm, 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 I'm starting to write a rebuttal and go, all right, here's what I think on things. And then I realized, well, that's not the opposite of what's going on. What's going on is just this sea of, of ick and oppression and, and heavy, right? Like heavy from every possible angle. And so what I ended up doing was, uh, you know, thankfully the kids were all out of the house and my wife was at work. And so I, I set my phone up um, and I, uh, I put on a pair of boxer shorts and tall white socks and I slid across my living room floor like Tom Cruise and Risky Business uh, to, to the song. And I pretended like I was Tom Cruise and danced in my living room and put it on Instagram. And, and I got I this, uh, this steady stream of people going, this is the greatest thing I've seen all day. I just laughed, blah, 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 blah. And I thought that's the opposite of the heaviness is the lightness. Right. And, and so, and so sure. when we started our, our two eyes fools podcast, me and my friend Aaron there, I mean, for us, it was a bit of a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ick and there's a lot of heaviness that we are experiencing collect collectively as a society right now. And we need to be able to laugh. There's gotta be some, some, some lightness. I think it's, it's necessary. And, and that little, you know, risky business stupidity that morning, I know that it, that it, it helped some people and it wasn't, oh, yeah. it wasn't poignant. It was dumb. It was just silliness for the sake of silliness. And, uh, but it was done on purpose, almost like, to me, it was almost prophetic stupidity <laughs> to be yeah. able to try and bring some spark. And I think that's, it's doable that's for everybody, right? Like everybody can be that. You don't have to, you know, do a whole theatrics like me, but but everyone can do this and, and we should. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think like also, yeah, I, I think that's good. I think, I think it's just, it's an easy target, right. To, to, to take, you know, we all have frustrations. We all have things that bother us throughout the day. And the thing is like having a phone and being on social media is just an easy, no consequence way to just get, get it all out there and just be negative And, you know, say the things that, you know, you would not say in person. Um, and just to make it like satisfying for yourself, you know, and, and you know, I, I think a lot of people are hurting. And I think the problem is, it's just, there's, it's too easy to let that frustration out. Mm-hmm. Um, if people are feeling good, they generally don't say anything, right? Like if people are scrolling through Instagram, and you know, they're happy, they're ki- they're chilling, you know, they may, ha- they, hit, they might hit the double tap on Instagram, you know, they <laughs> might, they might hit the heart on on Facebook, you know, but they're not going to go, you know, they might hit the comments of like, dang, you're killing it. Good job, girl. Like, you know, stuff like that. But as far as like, as far as like, you know, the negative stuff, you know, it's super, it's super easy and it, and, and it stands out because it is negative. Negative stuff is always the thing that stands out. I'm sure there's a lot of posts that, you know, are super positive, but the thing is like, man, a couple negative, super negative posts. It's like, sheesh, like it's rough. It's and like it, emotional it fast food, right? Like it's like yeah. it's like the quick satisfaction of fast food. And you know, when when I started doing the the Captain Kindness superhero dealy, really started to look at what of what kindness is. And and kindness, kindness is um showing benevolence. And benevolence uh is you know, it's it's like it's an it's a um it's an act. There, kindness is an is a is an actual act based on who you are deep down, and and I I'm a I'm a communications guy. I've been in broadcasting my whole life, different kinds of mediums and speaking and all that kind of stuff. And I really think that um, um, there was a there was an old there was an um, a Canadian university professor who was a communications guy. And he, he laid down a proposal about 
a philosophy of communications that sort of became best practices for a lot of years. Guy's name is Marshall McLuhan. And uh, he said that the medium is the message. And he said this around the time where TV was starting to become a thing and, and essentially going that the experience of the television was became more important than whatever the people on the television were saying. And, and it's similar to social media. The medium is the message. Mm. And, and, and I've always, I've always been bothered by it because I look and go, that's true if you're lazy. So social yeah. media being the medium will become the message if you're lazy and you let it. But yeah. if you go, the message is the message. <laughs> the important thing is what you do with the mediums. If you're yeah. smart and you go, I can inject something good into social media today. I can inject life. I can use this this phone in my hand as the most powerful computer that's ever existed. You know, yeah. I can encourage anybody who I know at any time right this very second. Positive, and so, yeah. yeah. And so that's where I look and go, the, the goodness inside of us can come out when you use kindness and you go, Hey, let's, let's use this medium. Let's use podcasting. I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to hang out with you on your, on your podcast today. And I've yeah. loved playing with the, with the podcast world because it's just another medium for me, like to be able to go, all right, let's figure out how podcasting works. Let's find a way to be able to encourage people and use it. And don't just let the world of podcasting wash over you and let the medium be the message. Let's, let's use it for something, right? Like let's do something with it. Yeah. And I think, I think the, uh, the beauty of podcasts too is it, it, it inherently most of the time is long form, right? Mm -hmm. So unless, unless it's, you know, YouTube stuff, because then they can kind of clip it up, but again, that's YouTube, right? So specifically podcasts, you know, pure, purely audio, you have to, the, the, the short little, you know, hate, you know, the, there's not really comments, there's reviews, but no one really looks at that. But the, the, you have to get it in its totality, right? You can't be a surface level um, podcast listener because inherently, you know, you're going to be, you're going to listen to someone's full thought because that's what, it, you know, this medium was designed for. So I think that's, what's beautiful about, you know, podcast space for me, because I've never been, um, for me, I, I've never been the guy that's like trying to be negative, trying to do like that short stuff. You know, I, I like to get like complete ideas. And if I'm trying to be funny, I try to be funny in a, in a, in a holistic way that, that, you know, won't be taken the wrong way. You know, I try to get my full idea out there because, you know, in this crazy internet world, you know, you never know what, is going to be flipped and turned into something that, you know, is this thing. And, you know, if that means like, oh, I don't grow or I don't become as successful as these other people that are doing like the short, you know, clipped negative, you know, review, you know, reaction. Like there's a mm -hmm. lot of people doing like reaction videos and stuff like that. Um, and I was just like, I, I don't really want to be known and I don't want to be like a hater. Like I've never, like, I know that that's, that's a way to like grow on the internet. If you want to, you know, be a personality, you know, do reaction videos, but I'm just like, man, I, I, do I want to be, do I want to be known as a hater? I know. That's no, what, no, I, you I, don't. You will. Like, no, you, know you don't. And, yeah. and I, and I, I do. And I, yeah. don't, and I don't. And, and, and I think for me, and if that means, if that's the detriment, if that's the barrier, you know, that I, that I have to, that I have to get through to become successful on the, on the internet, then I'm okay. I'm a hundred percent. Okay. Not that's being good. successful on the internet. Yeah, so it's good. So I think like people need to be conscious of, you know, how, like their message, you know, how, like what their general tone is, you know, because the general stuff at going back to what your friend said, the, the jet, the general medium and, you know, the general surface level message, overall message is what actually what your brand is. You know, that is what people know you for. That is what people know the platform for. Because yeah. most people, you know, on social media, especially like they're not really, you know, they might be on it for five minutes, you know, go back to doing their laundry on it for, you know, another 10 minutes, go back to, you know, TikTok, you know, on it for five, you know, so they're not really like digging deep. They're not like, oh, this is an interesting article I just saw on AB or on, you know, whatever, you know, account. Let me look deeper into this and see if it's true or not. No, that's not, that's not what's happening. People are just like, this, this looks bad. I'm going to attack this person. 
I have to be honest, I, I had never really, um, lots of friends that love podcasts. And I, before, before the lockdown a year ago, just, you know, a little bit more than a year ago, I had never delved into it. Um, it, but I, I decided to, you know, when all of a sudden we all had way more time and we're all inside, you know, and I thought, all right, let's, let's do this. And, um, for me, um, Bill Simmons, uh, is, he runs the, the ringer podcast network to, you know, sports, sports oh, podcast yeah. network. I think I know who that is. Who that oh, is. he, I remember him when he was a writer on ESPN. I'm going to Google the him boss. Real, real quick. I'm not oh, yeah. on my phone. Keep, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he he was uh, he called himself the Boston sports guy and was a was the one of the first guys to 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 mesh um, sports writing and, oh, yeah, and okay. pop culture yeah, okay. and and yeah and uh, he's done a bunch of different things but in the last bunch of years he's created this really successful podcast network moved out to L.A. Did uh, he get to write. fired? Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's been fired. This is a big yeah. thing. Oh yeah, yeah. He's been fired from a number of things, at, including ESPN. He came out to LA to write on Jimmy Kimmel's show, and uh, and him and him and oh, Kimmel sports? became uh, no, just just comedy. Kimmel hired oh, him as a comedy that. writer, and uh, and they they all became friends, and their you know their cohorts all mixed together. And now he's created this Ringer podcast yeah. network, which oh, yeah. which is quite substantial and. The reason I bring it up is, you know, when quarantine hit, I'm like, all right, I've always liked Bill Simmons. I've heard about the story. I miss listening to him and reading his writing. I'm going to start listening to the guy's podcast. And and I fell in love with his podcast, but then also his friends and all the different friends of his that became character characters in his podcast. And then he gave them different podcasts. And the thing that I, I fell in love with with this medium is that it's like making friends, like, mm -hmm. because you, you're committing to spend the time, just like what you were saying, like, how rare is that? It's extraordinarily rare. And, and I, I'm I, a, I realized it when I first, and you don't know until you do it, right? Yeah, totally. And like, so I'm a, I'm a radio guy. Radio was my, my first training. And, um, and when I was a kid, I, I loved radio. I, I listened to, you know, hot hits radio in Toronto. I listened to the Toronto Blue Jays and always would listen to different baseball broadcasts at night. I would, I would go to sleep to listening to the, to the radio and, and you, and you start to get to know these personalities. Well, a lot of that personality stuff has been sucked out of radio. It doesn't exist 100%. much anymore because it's just shot, 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 shot. It's like it's like the TikTok of TikTok of uh, it's yeah. it's been TikToked uh, essentially. Well, whatever but, uh, money's involved, I mean, yeah. TikTok's done it pretty well because inherently, oh. inherently, the entertainment aspect um, is by how you make the video, but. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm sure radio, you know, especially as things progressed, like, I mean, they were hurting for money. They're like, the ratings are good when you do this. They're bad when they, they do that. We're going to keep you doing this. And then yeah. the short term dollars came in. And like, look, I understand, but, you know, yeah, I, when I have get a sustainable it. I, brand, then it's probably I wrote I wrote radio ads for my living for, for 10 years. I've got a, a national radio advertising award right up there wow. to my right. Like, yeah, like, so... It, you master the mediums to communicate your message and it's different, but in, in each different medium. But the thing that I loved about the podcasts was what I used to love about radio is that you got to know who the people were. And that's yeah. what I've found with the two wise fools thing is that the people that are listening are listening every week and they're listening at work and they're, and it's like, they're becoming companions and, yeah. and the jokes that we made, you know, that's why I called it weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it's like revolutionary. <laughs> no. Yeah. Like it's true though. Like, you know, from an audio perspective, right. It's like, you feel like you're there. You feel like you're hanging out with, you know, with you too. Like, you know, it's a cool, it's a cool thing if you practice it and you deal with it and you know it for what it is. Right. Like I think a lot of people come into it, uh, thinking it's radio and yeah i think there's a niche there for 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 podcasts that you know operate you know i've had i've had some guests on the show that you know do it kind of like a like a radio show where like they have like a quick little skit thing that they do and then there's like this noise and then they play like you know the news or something or they play like music and then you know they have this quick there's a niche for that but i think like 
being yourself and being authentic and just having a conversation and being like talking to someone as if, you know, there's nothing on, there's no audio, there's no, you know, nothing. I think is what people are going to connect to and what people feel like, Oh, you know, this guy's just, you know, this is who he is. Like people, cause I have friends that, you know, listen to my podcast. They're like, wow, like your humor, like you're literally the same person. I'm like, yeah. Like, <laughs> I know, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I'm too lazy. To, I'm too lazy to like change for the, for, for, a, for a podcast. I'm going to be honest. Like, you know, even not cussing in this one, like, you know, is, is, is strenuous. That's, that shows you my level of my life. You're doing good. Discipline. You're doing, you're doing great. <laughs> i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying but uh yeah no uh i think i think that's i think that's cool what uh what like transpired like what was like the process between you and uh you and aaron starting the podcast what like what made it happen and what what is uh aaron's relationship to you yeah so i'm gonna say 10 years ago so we live on opposite sides of canada canada is very wide very yeah very distant where uh, <laughs> he's on the uh, far West and, and I'm uh, easterly just outside of Toronto. And, and you don't really uh, have an accent. what's no, no. You don't really In have, fact, it's very you, tiny. well, you know, uh, you know. Okay, you go. I remember, <laughs> I remember <laughs> in, in, in broadcast school, they told us that um, the sort of like middle Canadian accent is one of the easiest to be able to hire um, for on-air presentation around the world because it doesn't have it it's probably one of the accents with the least specific um intricacies that sound strange to other people's ears so yeah so there Makes you sense. Go. if it's you ever more, move probably to, more universally appealing if you ever to... move to finland and are looking for a voice you you come my way you will but uh, gotcha. so we okay. were we were involved in um uh, a ministry called 24 7 prayer where it was a a prayer ministry where, uh, you know, it started in the UK, moved to Canada, and uh, it encourages, you know, churches or groups will set up a room where people can do art in or do music or all these different kinds of artistic expression, what, what prayer can be. And then you go for like a week and you just tag team with a group and, and go, I'm going to take an hour. Then the next person takes an hour and the next person takes an hour. And it gives you that time and space to be able to create and, uh, and feel that, you know, feel awkward and then feel connected and then feel intimate with God and, th and that kind of thing. And, and, and him and I are very different people. He probably is more on a left, uh, a left leaning side of the political spectrum. I'm pr probably more on a right leaning side of the political spectrum We're we're very different uh, personalities. We've got very different um, views of life, but we share, we share our, our faith, our, our belief and we share, and uh, we would we would get together in these national meetings, and uh, him and I would just start joking with each other about the Flintstones and raisins and sports, and and we would go off on these tangents where we, him and I would often we 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 realized that we found ourselves as the funny guy in a lot of rooms, like you mentioned, being the class clown. That's who he was in his context. That's who I was in my context growing up and all the way through. And, and, and I, I love comedy. I, I love the art of stand up. I love the art of comedy. I love how jokes, um, how jokes happen. I love the setup. I love the punch. Making line. people I happy. Love, I love it. I, people's I love it. Like over my left shoulder, I got this old Steve Martin record. I've got all these, I'm just a lover of, of comedy, comedy records. That. What a beautiful thing. The, the whole cool, process it's badass oh, thing oh it's it's just it no no ass it up okay, that's fine know. yeah <laughs> like it, it, so on this steve martin record that i've got over my shoulder there's uh, there's this one line where in the middle of it and this was like this was one of the biggest comedy records that had ever hit when steve made it in like i think early 70s this, this how many changes and, over the decades too it's interesting oh, oh yeah no joke and, but but he says this one thing and it's not even a joke where it's it's like the transition between joke and joke and he goes he goes i was at home last night doing terrible things to my dog with a fork and it's it's not even a joke it's terrible it's a, this terrible image Horrible. but but in like in a five second thing, he, he shocks you. He takes you in something that feels normal and then drags you and drags you and then cross cuts you with a punch. 
and Beautiful. and I've always I've always loved it. And and so when Aaron and I met each other and uh, we started we started spending some time together, we realized that we both loved the art of the joke and and actually finding what's funny in any scenario. And then you know living in different sides of the country, we would we would just uh, you know on Facebook or, or whatever, just turn whatever we could into a joke and try and make each other laugh and try and make each other laugh. And, cool. um, and then just before, I guess probably around Christmas or end of uh, November or something like that, we were making each other laugh about something or other. And we said, I wonder if this is a thing. I, and we said, I wonder, I wonder if, if we did this, a podcast, I said, have you ever done a podcast? I said, nah, because <laughs> have you ever done one? I said, no, nah, no, not really. Let's try it. And let's just Were see you guys if it's listeners a thing. of podcasts at that point. A little, a, a little. little, a little. Did you guys see and, the like, like essentially like synonymousness of radio and podcasts? Or did you guys see it as like completely different things? Different thing. And, and we did it on purpose. Like both of us are professional speakers and, you know, we're, yeah. We're, we're used to being in front of crowds and we knew that this is not going to be something that's, you know, incredibly high. Like this is, you know, you don't do it to all of a sudden become Joe Rogan or whatever. We were, no, we, no. We, 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 we were doing it to make each other laugh because that's what we, we did in our own, our own little relationship. And, and we did it also on purpose because we're both busy guys. Like we, we, we do, we do quite a lot in our, our own communities and, you know, yeah. all these things. And, but we're like, nah, let's, I feel like it's important to be able to even model making time to laugh. And, and honestly, we were just so tired of spending our time talking about vaccines and Russian takeovers and, and, uh, and, and, and all the, yeah. <laughs> all the stuff like, that we get bombarded. Yo, I'm like, going to be I'm, honest. Dave, I'm tapping yo, out. I'm, I'm tapping I'm, out I'm, here I'm on this. I'm, ta I'm tapped out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yo, I think I'm going to change. Like I'm going to eliminate like COVID vaccine, it's, like done. Russia. Like I'm going to eliminate that from the yeah. topics. I don't care yeah. if we sit in silence. Yes. I'm so done with those. Like I would I'm, rather I'm, listen. I'm emotionally yeah. and psychologically at my wits end with those, yeah. with, with like anything negative. I could, I could whistle. I could sit and whistle. Maybe yeah. that, that would be better than that. And, and so, you know, we don't talk about any, any of this stuff and it's, and we've had some people go, you know, why don't you talk about serious things? Well, you know, Aaron, Aaron lives in the poorest postal code in the country, in Canada. He lives, he lives right in around, you know, the opioid crisis. Like he deals with his life is uh, serious. Oh, honestly, like he has people dying of drug overdoses on his doorstep that he chooses to live down in the middle of this every single day. Like yeah. he's, he's one of the, one of the coolest, hardcore guys I've ever met. And, and he chooses to laugh on purpose, A, because he needs it and B, because everybody needs it. And, and it's actually important. And, you know, you know, yeah. this past week we, you know, I did a, I did this little sketch where uh, about bidets <laughs> and about like we we did a we did a podcast of one of our guests called me little bidave uh because i said the bidets were surprisingly refreshing and i did like a fake ad where i said hi i'm little bidave uh you my <laughs> I, I support little bidave bidets because and then i'm trying to get listeners to be able to go <laughs> what the next line and why a bidet is refreshing. And there's people that that bothers so much and go, why aren't you talking about the important thing? And I'm like, you know, laughing actually is important. Right. And yeah. so, so for us, it's a, it's a doing it purposefully because it's important and doing it because laughing for us is important. And I think, yeah. It's and I think laughing. going, going off of that, like, I think like a lot of people, I'm a very, I'm a, I'm a, I would say I'm a spiritually sensitive person. Um, but then, you know, the world, we live in a world where we're like forced to repress and, you know, desensitize and deal with these hard things and, you know, just be hard and emotionally calloused. And, you know, I think uh, we have to remind ourselves that you know, it's okay to feel. And when you are in a state where you're feeling, you generally don't want to talk about the tough things, right? Like mm. when you're emotionally and spiritually vulnerable, you're usually not like, Hey, 
let me send a really risky text to my wife or my girlfriend about something yeah. I really don't want to. Like you, 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 that, that's not one of those things. Yeah, you, yeah. So you generally want to have a laugh. You generally want to be in nature. You want to, you know, you, you know, these things that, you know, bring you joy that we're supposed to feel, you know, obviously you don't want to always live in that state. We live in, we live in a world, right. Where, where we have to work and, you know, X, Y, and Z, but people need their outlets. I think, I think in fairness to, you know, the critics of your, of your uh, podcast, you know, also like it is therapeutic to talk about the rough stuff, you know, you don't, you know, you don't want to just ignore it, but also like, it's your podcast. Like you're going to do what you want. <laughs> like for me, like people, like I've been talking about the serious stuff, but the nice thing is about having different guests is I can kind of switch it up. Right. Like I don't have mm -hmm. to, like if people want to talk about something serious, then we'll talk about something serious. If, if, if it's a guest that, you know, maybe is younger, maybe they want to keep it light. Maybe they're, you know, they like to have fun. Then I'm going to have fun. That, that's what's nice about it is like, I'm not pigeonholed and, you know, branded to be this topic, right? Like for me, I'm going to probably like switch it up moving forward. Like sun's out, things are opening. Like people are getting their vaccine. We're about to, you know, I ate like, at like amongst other people without a mask mm -hmm. yet yesterday like mm -hmm. things are starting to be positive i want to i want to decalus myself a little bit mm -hmm. i want to have a little bit of fun i want to enjoy this 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 life you know we we've been uh you know i think there's a new we we all have a new appreciation to be in public we all have a new appreciation uh for our health you know we've we've thought about we've had the anxiety we've thought about this and that the problems you know, I think now is the time for us, you know, I think it's a new season. And I think, mm. I think the last season was dark. I think the last season was, was rough for a lot of people. It was heartbreaking for a lot of people. You know, it might've been, you know, it might've not been, it might've been financially good for, for some people. I, I leveled up as far as my business. I'm, I'm super blessed about that. But the thing is, you know, I think everybody now understands that, you know, more or less like they're not as in control as they think they are mm. um and i think like I, this is going to be one of the questions i had for you like i always think about you know my relationship with god how you know in the tough times i've seeked I, I, i've seeked god way more than in like the good times or in the times where i was victim to the illusion that i have my life together or mm. i i'm in full control of my life and um i think like I, I keep going back to the sentiment of like, I genuinely feel like the people that, you know, maybe aren't believers or maybe aren't as in tune spiritually with, with God or a higher power are the people that think they have their life together. They think they have full control of their lives because I remember seeing um, starting COVID and, you know, I was doing Instacart, you know, delivering groceries. And I just would see like, it was usually like the richest people the people that, you know, have money for everything, they've secured, they have security, they have money they, for food, this, they were stressed mm. at, about, about this thing that they could not see that could mm. potentially end their lives, you know, and it was just a very interesting note for me. And I, I just want you to, you know, touch on maybe your perspective on, you know, maybe why some people uh, believe maybe some why others may not. There's a lot there. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. So uh, years ago, uh, uh, my wife and I, we lived in uh, West Africa for almost a year. We lived in Ghana, <clears throat> loved it. Was a, it was a wonderful experience. And, and we, the, the main thing that I took away from the culture was this, was, was this kindness that I experienced there that, you know, in Canada and the States, you know, I, I don't think that we're not kind to each other or we're not, we're not cold, but we're also not in each other's lives on purpose. Right. Like, I don't feel like we're in each other's lives and going, I, Hey neighbor, I care about you. Right. Like, like maybe we once were as a culture. Yeah. <clears throat> and so when, when, when we came back, we started doing a bunch of different things and including these, uh, these, these uh, barbecues that, that, that we started to do, um, where our church was in the downtown of our city, it was a, it was a bit of a mess. And, uh, and from, you know, 10 o'clock till two o'clock in the morning, we watched a whole lot of stuff going on. 
between drugs and prostitution and all these different things. Right. And, and we didn't exactly know what to do. I'm going to get around to where your question. No, no, no. Just, Take your time. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, love, I love it. I love these bigger picture things. <laughs> cool. Take so, so, we can go so over too. don't feel, uh, you know, rushed. Cool. So, um, so we, we said, all right, what do we do? Like, how do we get involved in people's lives? And so we thought, let's do this. Let's do a barbecue. So we put a barbecue up on the street and we start yelling free burgers, free burgers into the midnight sky. And this uh, is in Africa. No, no, sorry. No, this this was got back. Got it. This is when we got back from Africa got it, got because cool. we, we, we were challenged about how do you bring kindness into a culture and, and really how do you, how do you show for us God's love in a practical way? Because, you know, it, that's, that's something that I think the church and people of faith have lost is actually the showing God's love in practical ways. And, and it should be transformational for lives and streets and cultures and X, Y, Z. Right. And so we started giving away these burgers in the middle of the night and uh, from 10 o'clock at night until two in the morning, we would do these free barbecues. Interesting time of day for a barbecue too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) It was, it was not, it was not the normal barbecue time. And that's okay guys. (laughs) (laughs) We had, we had a few of those messages too, going, are these people fine? And, and, uh, and it turned into, it turned into, this, this fascinating, um, almost like this obscure cultural bubble that was happening outside of the walls of our church, where we found as we went on year over year, we would have people who were influential, who would go, I don't understand what you're doing, but I'd like to come down and experience it. Sitting at high top tables, having cheap burgers with prostitutes and drug addicts. And, yeah, and, cool. and, and, yeah, and we would find the influencers and the people who were really struggling to be able to get by sitting, sharing a hot dog uh, at a table. And I would sit back and go, wow, this is really interesting. You know, this is yeah, an interesting cool. cultural experiment. And, and so to, to get to the question that you asked, I think, I think that deep down, everybody has, most of the same questions and most of the same insecurities and, and the offer of a hot dog, believe it or not, did similar things in the hearts and the lives of people that were very affluent and very rich and very influential. They did, it did similar things in their heart that it did to people that were really on the low end of the totem pole and really dealing with, dealing with, you know, security issues, food security and, and, and some severe stuff. And they wanted to know that people, people cared and they wanted to know that they were loved. And I think, I think, you know, this, this whole scenario has, has flushed out some deep rooted stuff in people. And, and I, and I think that it's played itself out similar in the high and the low uh, economic spectrums, oddly yeah. enough. Because I think about, you know, as I've, as I've, that, that, that's a beautiful, um, and I bet that was like, I, I love those experiences where you do something and you're like, huh, yeah, wow, this is, I learned something important today. Yeah. And you never, yeah. you, the, those moments are so beautiful and you, you, you know, you can't describe it, but you know when it happens and you're like, yeah. huh. This is interesting. Like I definitely had one of those aha moments when I started the podcast hmm. because I realized how um, I needed to s- facilitate an environment where we are being productive in order to have people have a genuine conversation with me. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Like, yeah. I like the, 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 we've created a culture where if, if, if we're not like doing it over a beer, it's, it's like as men, it's like, Oh, you just want to talk and hang out. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like yeah, you want to grab yeah. dinner? Like, what am I, your girlfriend? Like, why you want to grab <laughs> dinner with me? Like, I'm like, maybe because I want to hang out with you. Like, I don't know. <laughs> but, but then again, I fall, I fall to that too. Right. You know, maybe someone will come in town and, you know, they want to hang out. They want to stay for a little bit. I have a, you know, a buddy that wants to, you know, grab food. I'm be like, man, I'm, I'm busy because, you know, in America and in Canada, you know, the cult, like, 
there's a certain lifestyle that you need to maintain it. You know, God forbid you have kids, you know, God forbid you want a house, you know, a car, you know, these things that cost money. It's like, you, you got to work, you know, and that time after work, say you have kids, say you have a, you know, significant other, you're spending it with them. Right. So, yep. you know, I, I think it, it is in our culture to just really be like us, you know, mm. if I have extra time, it's going to be me. It's going to be my, you know, it's going to be my, my group. It's going to be my kids, my wife. Like I don't even have time for them, let alone <laughs> the community. Right. So yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think for me, you know, the podcast was definitely a good excuse for me to be like, okay, I'm being productive. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll be, I'll be on a podcast. You know, we'll, we'll talk about ideas. We'll share some laughs. Um, I've done that with my friends. I've done that with, you know, people that I don't know, but yeah, I definitely think the culture needs. Um, I think, I think we've, I think COVID was beautiful because it made us realize that like FaceTiming, talking on the phone, you know, these things do not suffice. They are not like, there's something inherently valuable about yeah. sitting across from someone, you know, knowing that they're there getting the subtle, you know, nuances of, you know, yeah. how they smell, how they feel that hug, you know, things like that, that handshake. Um, so I think it was horrible for a lot of people. I I'm not, and, yeah, and yeah. I'm not even saying, I'm not even saying this to be politically correct. I genuinely feel sorry for the people that, you know, may have lost loved ones. Um, but you know, it, it was a beautiful thing in, in, in other ways where it made us realize, you know, we need each other. We need to set these, this time aside. So I think that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's super dope. Um, have you, have you been to any other like place other than Africa? Like, how long were you there? Uh, my wife and I were there for, uh, seven months back in, uh, 2000. We and actually, you had, your, uh, you had your kids, right? with you? Nope. This was, this was pre kids. Okay, and, uh, yeah, pre kids. And, uh, we were young married. We were living in, uh, seven very, months or seven years ago. Wait, it I'm was, so uh, uh, we were there in, uh, 2000. We lived there for seven months. So it was a seven month, uh, oh, got stretch. It, got it, got it, got it, And, uh, it was, uh, it was an experience. I was actually coaching, uh, baseball oddly enough. Wow. I, I, yeah, I, uh, I was, uh, I brought a bunch of baseball equipment with me with a guy that um, uh, I taught broadcasting. There's a broadcast school here um, that um, brings people from all over the world uh, and teaches them uh, media in like sort of a four month crash course. And I was sort of the, the uh, on air um, interviewing teacher and that kind of thing. Met this guy and, uh, and really clicked. And felt like we, you know, needed to be able to go and work with him. And we planted churches using uh, literacy, uh, adult literacy in different villages in the northern part of Ghana. But I, I, I brought a bunch of baseball equipment with me and we would do like baseball camps a couple days a week and started a league where they eventually went into some different uh, communities, wherever you could find uh, to be able to, you know, kick kids off a soccer field long enough to be able to play baseball for, really? for, for an hour. And that's really what it was because man, it's, it's soccer, it's it's soccer everywhere, man. It's, it's oh, powerful. it's a, oh yeah. 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 You had to it's really easy, do that's some, why you just need a ball. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you need a ball. Baseball like, is a barrier to entry, you know, in fairness to them. Oh yeah. So, and, uh, we, so we, we did these things and, and then the guys that I trained, um, uh, they eventually started a league where they would go into different communities and teach them, uh, both baseball, but then job skills and life skills and that sort of thing. And, and, uh, the, the guy that I left the equipment with, um, at the time there was only, there was only him with baseball equipment and then a bunch of Japanese ex pros, uh, that would go into the more wealthy schools in Ghana and would teach really the more the more wealthy kids baseball. So so all the kids in West Africa that had baseball equipment and learned how to play it all um, called balls and strikes with a Japanese accent. So all these wow. all these Ghanaian kids were like Steve Reiko, and it was it was, the, it, was the, it was the funniest thing. It was the funniest so thing funny. ever. Oh yeah, the 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 guy that that I made friends with, uh, the Japanese ex pro, used to play with Hideo Nomo, who was the first Japanese baseball player to play with the LA Dodgers uh, uh, years ago, and 
this guy was this guy was awesome but you know we were clearly the ricky dink league and but it was it was neat because the guy that i trained he he could barely throw a ball uh by the end of it but eventually he was he was a visionary enough that it became the head of baseball in the country and he asked me if i would come back and be one of his baseball coaches and i'm like i can't be cool runnings i'm sorry i can't i can't be the cool runnings baseball guy in uh, west africa but but i had the shot i I had the shot but yeah, it was it was it was, it was really it was really wonderful, and I I treasure it for sure. Do your uh, how old are your kids? My kids are 18, 16, 14, and they hey, are. Uh, do they do um, they get involved in any of that stuff? Well, I talked young. about I talked about Captain Kindness earlier, and um, my son uh, when uh, this Captain Kindness character that, that we created that, you know, turned into a thing. Oh yeah. Um, we didn't even really, we, we kind of just like, yeah, we kind of just went over that. <laughs> I, I actually, but, I actually am like curious, like, like, well, I'll what... tell you the story. I'll tell you, I'll tell you how it happened. Like this was a, it was uh, we were doing some community outreach thing and, and we thought, well, you know, we could use a superhero and uh, the theme in the uh, city Santa Claus parade that year happened to be superheroes and you know the christmas parade that many cities have and we said all right well let's put dave in a leotard and stick him up on a flatbed truck and we'll call him captain kindness and uh and that's what we did we got like a mr incredible costume and adapted it and put a different crest on it and logo on it and you know i got up on the this flatbed truck and went Bradford, do you believe that this city can be changed with kindness? <laughs> and I did this big, stupid voice, and we won the award for the best float in the parade. And wow. uh, and next thing I knew, I was being invited to all these different things. And and the, the the next Christmas, I lit the city's Christmas tree with the mayor and Santa Claus. And I thought I always figured I'd be up on the stage, but I'd never figured it would be in a leotard. You know? Wow, man, <laughs> and, life and. Is weird. Oh yeah. It's weird. It's weird. And, and it, and it turned into, you know, I will, I will, if I'm speaking at something inside of our, our cities, you know, it's like a hundred thousand people. Um, but you know, I've, I've, it's turned into being able to talk to sometimes international audiences about kindness and, and this, this superhero, there's something so ridiculous about it, but it resonates with both. It's, it, but the thing is, it's, it's so, it's so corny, right? Like, yes, that, that's, that's what that's what I that's what's dangerous about our world today. Yeah. Like it's corny to be Captain Kindness. It's like, yeah. what? Yeah. That's corny. But yeah. being Captain, like, you know, getting all the girls or, you know, getting well, as much money, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's cool now. It's like, I'll man, tell that, you the that moment shows you. I'll tell you the moment that I, that I knew it was a thing. Uh, like in our our downtown, our downtown was a mess for a lot of years, and and our city put a lot of work into it, and and um, brought a university campus down there, and was really working at creating a better environment in our downtown. And uh, it, as our our church called Freedom House in Brantford, we started doing we helped the city with like movies in this public square and all these different things. Anyway, so I would go and host these movies for the, for the city in this Captain Kindness costume. And at the end of it, I would I would have to walk the gauntlet from this civic square back to our church, which was downtown, past a bunch of these different bars where people were, were out on the patios drunk at, you know, 10 o'clock at night or whatever. And I'm and I'm in a I'm in a leotard and a cape. And it was it was a gauntlet every night. I'm like, oh dear God, I'm I gotta do this thing. And I'm walking by and they're cat calling and as so That's they funny. should, right? There's an idiot in a costume. Right? I mean of sober course. drunk. Of I course, mean, sober drunk, whatever. Guilty, yeah, of course. I probably would do the same thing. Right thing thinking people should mock me yeah so so i'm you walking the yeah. god <laughs> yes i would judge them if they didn't I yeah agree. exactly anyway so i'm walking by and this one guy who's clearly he's totally in the bag and he's you know he comes after me and he's like captain kindness captain kindness and i turned to him and i said hello citizen <laughs> you know and just trying to desperately get in there so i could change and go back to the movie he goes, Captain Kindness, I got to tell you something. He said, uh, he said, uh, this morning I was downtown and, and a homeless guy came up to me and he, and he, and he was asking me for money. And I thought to myself, what would Captain Kindness do? 
And he said, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. And he goes, and he goes, and I, and I, and I took him out for breakfast and we sat there and he told me about his life and I told him about mine and it was fantastic. And I just wanted to let you know what happened down here today. And then he stumbled off back into the patio and I'm like, holy crap. You know, that's like, cool. Right. That was and, worth it right then. Even if nothing else happened. Yeah. And, and it's been, it's been a decade plus of this where, you know, somehow in my down, in my, in my community, people just, they just know me as captain kindness and, well, and it's, you know it's, it's the too? weirdest bloody thing ever, but it's, it's so fascinating because it's so dumb and stupid and, and, but funny, but it also makes people think and about thinking like, what, what can we do? Right. Like marketing's, I mean, marketing's powerful. Marketing's marketing, right? Like if you are sending out a message enough, people are going to be like, huh, you know, enough people are going to be like, huh, that's interesting. And like yeah. actually adopt it. Some people yeah. weren't going to be affected by it anyway, but you know, you're making an impact. There's a percentage there that if you did not exist, if you weren't doing that, you know, their lives wouldn't be changed. But yeah, um, it's funny because, you know, in our society, everyone's just trying to be like, cool, right? Everyone like, you know, being kind is like not cool. You know, it's like, we're so calloused and so hard. We don't want to be vulnerable. We don't want to be like, oh, I like kindness. I like kindness because it's like, it's shown you're soft, right? You're like, oh, well, if he's Captain Kindness, that means he's not a tough guy. It means he's not, you know, X, Y, and Z, right? And I think that's part of the problem why people don't want to adapt that type of uh, mentality. You know, maybe they've been burned by life, by people. So being kind, it's like, why should I be kind to, you know, that you turn cynical after a while, you know, why, why should I be kind? You know, what, what has the world ever done to me? Why, why should I be kind to other people? What do they don't deserve it? You know, and yeah. these thoughts come in. Right. But I think like we, we, you see people like you, like, you know, other people that are trying to be positive, trying to do the right thing. And we assume that they haven't had problems, that they haven't had the trials and tribulations that maybe, you know, me, the cynical person, let's say, might have had so i think it i think uh that's why i think like getting the bigger picture right like letting people know who you are what you've been through and you know what what your history is and then being like hey guess what just because of that i'm i'm tough and you know i'm 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 showing you kindness not because i have to not because you know i'm being you know someone's twisting my arm because i think it's you know the right thing to do yeah I was joking with you before uh, about Generation X, but but honestly, like I am a, I am a by nature, like if it was just my own nature, I am a pessimistic person. Like I'm a pessimistic person, a glasses half empty person. I'm a cynical person, um, and I didn't I didn't buy this stuff when I when I started doing it, but I wanted to see genuine systemic change and systemic transformation in the things that I touched with my life. And, and I thought I'm going to give this an actual try. And if it works, cause I'm, I'm also pretty, I'm a pretty level-headed rational guy, even though, you know, I'm creative and out there and like, like laughing and stuff, but I, I wouldn't have continued all these years if I didn't see genuine change happen and, and genuine stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one story that's, always stuck with me. And, uh, I was, I was in an elementary school and, uh, it was maybe a first grade class, something like that, uh, that often people will bring captain kindness in to to talk to classes. And, and what I'll do is I'll, 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 um, depending on the amount of time I have with each class, I'll talk with about, uh, with them about things that they have good inside of them and sort of start small and then go, how do you use kindness to transform your family and then your uh, school, and then your community. And so I, I had about maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes with this one class. And so I said, oh, I'm Captain Kindness, <laughs> right? And, and did the, the big monkey dance. And, and, uh, and, and so I said, all right, Billy. He said, what do you like about yourself? What's kind about you? And, uh, and this one kid in this class looks at me, stands up and he goes, he said, he said, I ain't no superhero. Hmm. And he put his hood up over his head. And I said, Oh, How old is he? you know, first grade, something Jeez. like that. 
Okay. And, and, you know, all the other people in the class were, you know, talking about, I like ponies. I like this, that, and the other thing. I like, you know, my, my mommy, I like my sister. And this one kid was, it was clear. It was something was going on. And then I went on to, you know, uh, your family, how do you use kindness in your family? Nothing. How do you use kindness in your school? Nothing. And then I, I asked him, I said, all right, Billy, what, uh, you know, how do you use kindness to be able to transform your community? And he looked at me and he said, he stood up and stared me in the eye and he said, somebody broke into my house and beat up my mom and dad. And I said, oh boy, that's not the question that I asked, right? But clearly I had hit a button and this kid was dealing with something far out of the depths of how he was able to deal with it, right? And I thought to myself, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, right. And and I'm and I'm thinking, you know, how do I how do I respond here? I'm, you know, a goofball in a superhero costume. And uh, there's a scripture in Psalms that says to guard your heart for it's the wellspring of life. And I thought I'm in a I'm, I'm in a public elementary school and this is not especially in Canada, this is not a place where I can just go and, you know, talk scripture. And so I rephrased it and I said, I looked at him in the eye and I said, "You guard your heart, little man." He said, you have goodness inside of you and don't let anybody take that away from you. And he, and he jumped up and he hugged me oh, and I looked beautiful. at, and I looked at his teacher in the background and the teacher was weeping. And she told me later that this is exactly what had happened. And she wanted to be able to bring me in because this kid was a superhero kid, you know, and, and, mm. and he had gone through some really, really tough stuff. And so for her, it was exactly this. And, and, and I'm like, my goodness, you know, just the, just the reminder for people that they have stuff inside of them and they can change the world around them with, with kindness, uh, even just that, um, you know, those who are listening to this podcast, you know, I, just a reminder that you, you have an incredible superpower of kindness inside of you. And that there's going to be people who you encounter even today uh, that are going to need to be reminded of that. Yeah. And reminding, you know, other people reminds you as well. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was good, man. That gave me goosebumps. I'm, I me watered, too. My eyes watered a little bit. I'm still a tough guy though. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but uh, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up. I think that's a great um, ending point. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. I think that was, that was like what, probably one of my favorite shows. Um, super, uh, I feel like we hit every great thing that I like to hit, which is, mm. you know, utility, entertainment, storytelling, you know, so thank you for coming on. You're well, it was so great to be able to be here and meet you. And uh, I'm glad you're doing this. It's uh, It's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise to you. I like, I like your guys' show. It's very, very funny, very high energy, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right. Thank you guys for uh, listening. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to, uh, you know, review, subscribe, whatever, uh, where, where can they find you? Who wise fools on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get podcasts, there are a million places that it is where go and find it. And if you can't find it where you like it, then it's Apple and Spotify Two wise fools. Listen today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were a writer for ads, man. I, I need something yeah. better. The, the yeah, I know. So I, I probably should have. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. Should have been better. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Peace. And that is the Do Wells Hangout podcast, guys. Thanks for coming along. If you can, please leave a five-star review on Apple, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. That would be lovely. Uh, leave a comment as well. We, we really appreciate that. Thanks.